This is the most important piece to silencing my cold weather bow hunting gear. From the silencing of the stand, to the bow, to the bow hanger, to the binoculars, the optics, the harness and so on. No particular order, but we'll start with the big stuff first. Obviously with bow hunting whitetails we're using tree stands and in the foreground here is a tree stand that if you look more closely at it, this stand here is totally covered in hockey tape. Back in the day when it was originally taped, it was a black tape, but as the sun exposed it, it became a little more gray, a little more neutral in color, in color which is better. But the point to it is it's soft to touch. Soft to touch for a couple reasons. Um, makes the stand a lot more quiet and with res respect to cold weather, um, it gives you something that's a little warmer to touch when you handle it in the cold weather doing installs and carrying and so on. Um, also on the upper is, a, is a, a stocking cap that we put on here to help um, silence it as well. But it's key to have your stand well taped and silenced so you can in fact do a silent hunt. In addition to that, the normal strap has been replaced with rope. If you're the kind of hunter that's uh, comfortable tying ropes and knots, uh, that's one system that we've used for years, but it's a matter of personal preference and, and uh, make sure you're safe with it, of course, whichever technique you, you choose. Um, going to the bow here, uh, this is an old school bow. It's got a lot of miles on it, you might say. And if you look closely, there's hockey tape in various places. There's hockey tape on the rest combined with a little bit of moleskin to make sure the bow draws silently. There's hockey tape right above the rest in case you have a mishap and an arrow pops up. Assume in bow hunting that you're always going to have problems and when you have your problems uh, hopefully you've already planned a solution. If for some reason I, I don't think you can get up to the bottom of your rest but even the, bo or the bottom of the site rather, bottom of the site is taped as well in case an arrow ever gets near there. Um, there's, there's tape in various locations here and camel cloth wrapped on the bow as well just to silence the overall bow in case the limb of the bow or the quiver touches something. Um, so there's a lot of focus on silencing, silencing the bow and that's what, uh, why this bow looks so old and ragged. It's been very efficient for getting on mature whitetails because it's nicely silenced, it draws quietly, it carries quietly, it doesn't rattle and so on. Um, further along, I mean, there's all kinds of various items here that are key for cold weather bow hunting. Uh, a, a tree hanger for, for uh, hanging your bow. You know, as a right-handed shooter, I generally have my bow hanging at the, about this height. But just the, the, every arm of this is covered in hockey tape. And at the end here where you hang your bow, there's white hockey tape on here. And the reason for that is low light. So you just do a strip of white hockey tape when the light's fading or you're trying to pull your bow off in the, in the morning. Um, you can see what you're doing, you can see where it is, and it gives you an indication. But just the handling of this, it's nice and quiet. Right now the bow hanger to a metal tree step, it sets on there quietly because both items are taped. Generally, as far as tree stand setups, we usually have bolts or steps in place, but if you ever do like a, a hang and hunt, uh, scenario if you take a dozen or 14 tree steps in with you this is a taped up tree step once again with white tape on it so you can see it in the low light but you can have a dozen of these steps packed tight together and you will have no metal rattle because the it's the tape against the tape in terms of uh, um, there's no metal contact so you can get in areas set in the dark or in the afternoon and hunt that hunt hang and hunt because you're you're taped up um, little hanger, This generally I'd use this to hang the Fanatic pack on. Once again, it's taped up because I keep it in a pouch with other items. And uh, if it's touching, I mean of course I have to keep the threads exposed with the metal. But uh, you can't tape those, but I tape everything else. Once again, a little white tape so you can see it in the dark. Typical bleat can, we tape these up um, just for the simple fact that um, these, you know, they're plastic all the way around. So if we cover them up with tape, punch holes in them so they still call well, they, uh, they're just a quieter item to have with you. Once again, that's taped up as well. Uh, moving towards the optics, um, a binocular harness, a set of binoculars. Um, there's tape incorporated in here. The rangefinder, I personally like having the rangefinder attached to the bino harness. 
um, rather than having to dig for it. And that system served us well. Generally, we try not to reach for the rangefinder during the hunt when it happens, but it's just nice to have it handy in the event that you do need it. Um, we try to pre-range before any animals come close. Binocular covers, an absolute necessity in the Alberta cold and the snow of November. And if you look closely, this is just really ratty and ragged because the tape, you know, gets old and, and ragged, which is nice because this plastic on here, on the bino cover itself, turns to just frozen solid hard and it'll click if it touches down on here uh, in the cold weather so that the tape eliminates that. The straps themselves, if you look closely, these are hockey tape loops which are tied as string so there's no hard surface to hard surface. Everything is, is the binoculars themselves have hockey tape loops coming off the connections so this ultimately is a non-rattling binocular harness slash range finder system. So that's why that is set up the way it is. A lot of things we do too are based on thermal because we hunt in such cold weather. We, you know, we're wearing cold weather gear, cold weather gloves, the clothing, we'll get into that in a minute. And uh, as far as the set of rattling antlers, um, and on mature deer, you don't use these much. You use them every once in a while. But when you have to get them in your hands, this is hockey tape on it as well. I mean, it's been a lot of years on here and the tape is starting to wear off, but it lets your, gives you a little bit of thermal from freezing your hands when you do use these. But once again, big buck hunting is generally a pretty quiet game. So we don't, we don't use them much, but they, are, they definitely should be in the arsenal. A bottle taped once again, um, so it's quiet to touch and white and black so you can see it in low light um, as far as having a bottle with you for various reasons depending on what your, what your choices are. Uh, but once again, covered with hockey tape. Uh, moving into the harness system, you know, whether you use a, a full-on harness or a hip harness, I use a seated harness system. So what I like to do here is um, the buckles, uh, the locking beaners, and I believe in bow hunting they should be locking beaners only and nothing else. Um, a non-locking beaner can be really dangerous, a rope can be clipped on and then it can get pulled through itself again and unclipped so it can be very dangerous. So we use only locking beaners. But this beaner, if you let it go, any, any beaner is going to click. So when you use a, a beaner in bow hunting, you learn to control it nice and quietly and then spin it, spin it closed so it's nice and safe and it cannot get undone regardless of what the rope does because it's nicely locked. And uh, that's those, like I said, those are the only beaners we'll use. As far as zippers, you know, we've got all the, the Fanatic gear hanging here combined with a few other Sitka pieces, but this is a typical of a, of a zipper that we'll tape up with a hockey tape, uh, a piece of hockey tape tab. Some of the Sitka zippers are nicely silenced anyway, but in addition, if you have a zipper that's in a place with a lot of motion, it can rattle just slightly so a lot of times we'll just add a piece of zipper, which is taking a piece of hockey tape like this. I call it hockey tape string. Just take a piece like this, spin it tight, stretch it out, create a string, and then from there you can just tear it off and you've got a nice quiet piece. And with a little bit of work you just incorporate that to make a zipper that it was rattling to a nice quiet zipper. So that's what we do when we refer to that as hockey tape string. Um, as far as uh, uh, calling, this is a, a grunt call here on this one. Um, I, I like, in Canada it's so cold, I use inhale calls. Now a lot of inhale calls are exhale calls, but you just reverse them and, and tape them in place. And uh, um, this one is pinned on, so, I, so it's positioned right here. I can literally have a bow in my hand and have a buck close to me and I can actually turn my head to get my mouth on the tube of this call for an inhale call. But once again, everything's taped here. I always assume the worst with everything's taped because something, if there's, if, there's room, if there's room for error, something will touch something and all it takes is a little click, whatever that might be, and your hunt is over after, after all the effort and such to put it in after all the effort that you put into it. so But that's the gist of how I silence the gear for the most part, but 
any piece of equipment that I'm touching for cold weather bow hunting, I'm having a really hard look at it to see how can this possibly get me, where can I put the tape, how can I silence this thing, because I'm an optimist when I hunt, but I always expect the worst with respect to what I have to deal with in terms of silencing of the gear. You just got to work through it all. So hopefully that helps you in silencing your own gear wherever it is that you might hunt, and uh, hopefully that'll bring you a little luck.